Welcome to Holy Family Memorial's Joint Camp class for the total hip and total knee replacement patients. My name is Amy and this is John and we're physical therapists at Holy Family Memorial and we'll be teaching you the exercises that we have you do after surgery and also go over the pro proper way to complete a transfer using a walker and getting in and out of bed. Um, these exercises can be started before surgery if you can tolerate them. Ideally, you would do the exercises one time per day um, before surgery to increase your range of motion, strength, and muscle memory before surgery. However, if you're not able to tolerate them, just reviewing them is, is great as well. After surgery, we will be doing these exercises two times per day in the hospital, and you will continue to do these after discharge, whether you're going home or to an outpatient or rehab facility. Let's get started on the exercises. There are nine total exercises we're going to go over today. The first two are going to have you sitting in a chair or on the edge of the bed to complete these. So the first one is called a long arc quad or knee extension in sitting. And as you watch John, he is going to sit up in a chair and he's going to try to straighten his surgical leg at the knee by lifting his toe up towards the ceiling and holding for a count of one to two seconds as he is able. Then he's going to slowly return to the starting position. This is working on trying to strengthen that thigh muscle and increase the extension of the knee. This exercise can be difficult in the total knee replacement following surgery if you've had a femoral nerve block for pain control. It may take a, a few days for us to be able to advance you to this or you being able to do it on your own, but we'll monitor your progress on a daily basis. Okay. The second exercise is called a chair push-up. This one really helps with getting you strong enough to get up and down from chairs after surgery or a commode um, from the edge of the bed as well. For this exercise, you want to scoot forward into a chair, preferably that has armrests. You're going to put your arms on the armrest and try to raise your bottom up off the seat. Hold for a second or two and then slowly lower yourself down. For all these exercises, we generally try to work up to a, a 10 repetitions. You may find that that's too many or too few to feel that you've worked those muscles or you might fatigue faster than that. So you'll have to monitor how you tolerate these. Very good, and you should feel this in the back of your arms, like the, what we call the triceps, essentially. Um, and again, it'll help with getting up and down from chairs and also unweighting with using the walker. All right, so now John's gonna go from the chair on over to the bed to complete the other exercises. When you get up from a sitting surface, you wanna push up with one hand off the, the stable sitting surface. The other hand can be up on the walker and your surgical leg is gonna be out in front a little bit. All right, then you're gonna push up to standing, slide your surgery leg back, hands both go up to the walker, and then you're going to start taking small little steps going towards the other surface. You're going to lead with your surgery leg, push on the walker and step with your non-surgery leg to advance. When you get close to the other surface, you wanna take your time taking small steps to complete that transfer so that you don't twist over your surgery leg. You wanna back up to the sitting surface. Then you're going to bring your surgery leg out in front, reach back for the bed, and slowly lower yourself down. Okay, you wanna scoot further back onto the bed then whoever's assisting you can move the walker out of the way. For most patients, we do have them put a pillow between the legs if they've had both knees done and if they've had a hip replacement. A single knee replacement wouldn't have to do this, but sometimes it's just more comfortable. So you squeeze the pillow between the legs. One hand is gonna be up towards the head of the bed. You're going to try to lower yourself down as a unit. So going down onto your top arm and lifting the legs at the same time. 
scooting them back onto the bed and then rolling onto your back. From there you just reposition by walking the legs over a bit, repositioning the shoulders, and then you can put the legs flat onto the bed surface. For a hip replacement, we generally have you get in and out on the side of your non-surgery hip for comfort reasons. Most don't like to roll onto their surgery hip. Um, for a knee, really either direction works okay. Um, it's really more personal preference. We're going to get back to doing our exercises now. Um, the third exercise we call an ankle pump. Here you're just going to move those ankles up and down. So the toes are pointing up towards you and then you're pushing them down and away in a nice steady motion. Again, you can do 10 repetitions of this exercise. More is fine. A little bit less is okay too, whatever is comfortable for you. Mostly these are done to increase um, range of motion and circulation um, and therefore preventing blood clots post-operatively for both hips and knee replacement patients. Okay, the fourth exercise is called a gluteal set. So with laying flat on your back, or you could do this sitting up as well, you're going to try and tighten the buttocks holding for a count of five, One, two, three, four, five, and then relaxing. And repeating this again up to, a, um, we work towards a set of 10, if possible. John is counting out loud. A lot of patients tend to hold their breath during this exercise, so that's a very good way to make sure you're not doing that. With a hip replacement, you might feel a little bit of pulling right along that incision after surgery, we just ask that you do as best as you can tolerate with this one. And it's working to strengthen those buttock muscles after you've had surgery. <clears throat> All right, the fifth exercise is called a quad set. So your quad muscle is your thigh muscle. John's kind of showing his left leg there a little bit more for you. Um, this is called an isometric exercise, so that means there's really no movement involved of the joint itself. You're going to try to tighten that thigh muscle by pressing the back of your knee flat into the bed or whatever surface you're laying on, and we should see that kneecap tightening as, we, as he does this, and you can see that contraction of his thigh muscle as he's pressing down. This exercise you want to try to hold for five seconds again and working up towards a set of 10 repetitions is what we aim for here again. Um, if you're able to do more, we'll progress towards that. For the knee replacement patients, we also use this exercise to measure how straight that knee is getting when, you, when you're activating that muscle. So we will use a tool called a goniometer, which is like a big protractor, to measure that angle between the, the ankle, knee, and the hip for this exercise. Okay, the sixth exercise is called hip ab and adduction. Again, you're gonna be laying on your back with your knees straight. Toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. You're gonna move your surgical leg out to the side and back in towards the middle. For a hip replacement, you, know, you don't want to cross over what we call midline, so it's just out to the side until that leg is straight with your hip again. When you're doing this at home, ideally without shoes, that way you can just slide across the, the mattress um, or the, your, your bedding. Your shoes won't catch on that surface. Um, after surgery here in the hospital, us as therapists, this is part of what we do, so we're helping assist you with this as well. You should feel this working the outside of your buttock area on the side that you're exercising. Again, might be a little bit uncomfortable for those that are having the hip replacement done. But this exercise is good at stabilizing the pelvis, which is important for walking and stairs and those types of activities. The seventh exercise we're going to go through is called hip flexion or a heel slide. 
So you're gonna be on your back again and you're slowly going to bend your hip and your knee, trying to bring your heel up towards your bottom. You go as far as is comfortable for the knee replacement. For the hip replacement, we make sure to watch the angle you're at between your thigh and your, your, your trunk. Um, you've got hip precautions that don't allow more than 90 degrees. So we're watching that. Right there's 90 degrees, John is showing that. And then you'd go back down. Some patients don't tolerate getting that high, so we're, we're safe. Um, but that's a general ballpark of where we try to work towards. For the knee replacement, we're focusing on increasing the knee range of motion. So we're trying to get it as far as you can tolerate. Again, we're going to use that tool called the goniometer to measure the amount of that angle, that knee bend at your knee one time per day when we are working with you here in the hospital and they'll continue that in the rehab setting. The, the eighth exercise we're gonna do is called a terminal knee extension or a short arc quad. For this exercise, we use a bolster or a foam roll here in the hospital at home, you can use a coffee can or roll up a towel roll or something like that. And what you're gonna try to do with this laying on your back is you're gonna work on straightening your knee, just like John's doing. So like a small little kick up towards the ceiling, you're gonna try to pause and hold for a count of one to two seconds and then slowly back down to the start position. Like I mentioned earlier, when John was doing a similar exercise sitting in the chair, this can be difficult for those having a femoral nerve block with their knee replacement for pain control. Those nerve blocks can turn off the muscle um, while that's running, and so we, we might have to help you a little bit more with this exercise, but as that dose tapers or they turn it off, the, you're, you'll return um, to be able, being able to do this exercise. Again, we're working up to a count of 10 with this one as well. And it's working to strengthen that quadricep muscle, which is real important after surgery to keep strong. Okay. And the number nine exercise we have is called a straight leg raise. So again, laying on your back. For this exercise, you're going to bend your non-surgical leg which John has his right leg bent up. And that gives your back some support. With your surgery leg, you're gonna straighten out your leg, hold that, that knee down, doing that quad set, and then slowly raising your surgery leg up off the bed, pausing for a count of one to two seconds, and then slowly coming back down to the start position. For this exercise, you don't wanna go any higher than the opposite knee that's bent up. Very good. And for the hip replacements, because the beds elevate here in the hospital, we prefer that you do it laying flat. If you bring the head up, that means that's less of, that you can actually lift that leg if we're watching that 90 degree hip precaution. This exercise, we also work up to a count of 10 repetitions as, as you're able to do that. For those having both knees done, we have you bend your other leg to less degree. At least you get some back support with this. Um, sometimes we just have the head of the bed up a little bit too, but we kind of work with what you're able to do at that point. Okay. The last thing we're gonna show is getting back out of bed. So when you're all done with your exercises, we're gonna have you bend your knees up and put that pillow back between the knees. You're going to try to scoot over onto your hips, kind of tuck them under you a bit. You're gonna reach across with your arm for the edge of the mattress or the railing, if that works, sliding the legs over to the side. You're now gonna use those arms to try to push yourself up and sort of scoot over to the edge of the bed trying to keep that joint, whether it's a hip or a knee, in proper alignment. And that 
That completes the exercises and demonstration of how to complete a transfer and bed mobility post-operatively at Holy Family Memorial following a total hip or a total knee um, surgery. Thank you.